Hi, my name is Josh Mahoney, Chief Market Analyst at Scope Markets. This coming week brings the latest RBNZ interest rate decision on Wednesday the 14th of August. And it's going to be an interesting one because markets are split on whether we're going to see a rate cut or a rate pause. But we need to look into whether there's a justification for it and whether they're actually just holding off to see the inevitable. Let's get into the data. First and foremost, we can see here in terms of relative inflation, let's just get a little bit bigger here. You can see here the current state of affairs for New Zealand is that it's elevated 3.3% on the headline inflation rate. That's above the likes of the US, Canada, the Eurozone, the UK, Switzerland. So you might think from this perspective, there's no justification for an interest rate cut from the RBNZ. So nothing to see here. Well, that may be the case, but then you also need to bear in mind how things are going to shape up once we see the next inflation gauge coming out from New Zealand. Bearing in mind that we have, of course, uh, got a country that releases its inflation data on a quarterly basis. So we've got to wait around about two months to get that next quarter of data. But as we can see here, the last three quarters saw inflation uh, that was at a very healthy level. It was uh, back below uh, the kind of levels that we we're seeing prior. Uh, and it's notable that the figure that we're seeing stripped out this time around essentially is the outlier here. It's not the norm. So the last three readings were 0.4% for Q2, 0.6% for Q1. So between them adds up to 1%. And Q4 of last year, 0.5. So that means that with a 0.5% reading, which essentially is the average of the last three quarters, we'd be back at 2%. And the reason for it is that we've got a big old 1.8% reading from Q3 of last year being stripped out. So 1.8% being stripped out. So the fact that we're at 3.3% for New Zealand inflation uh, is a temporary measure. And you can see over the last three quarters, that we are essentially tracking at target. And you can see that on the bottom section, I've essentially annualized each of the previous uh, uh, three quarterly figures. Well, I've annualized each of the quarterly figures and the past three numbers are tracking around that 2% target. So in two months time, there's an expectation that we're going to see New Zealand inflation back down to target. So 3.3 now, but in one foul swoop, there's a good chance we might be right back down to that 2% target. And why is it keen for them to start to move? Well, as we can see here, there's two countries uh, in the sort of Western world, so to speak, that are tracking at a different pace from the others when it comes to unemployment. One of them is Canada, and we can see that it's pushing sharply higher. I say sharply, it's moving uh, sharper than many of the other countries here. The other one is New Zealand. We have been climbing in terms of unemployment. So there is a bit of pressure on New Zealand to act. And when we're looking in terms of the interest rates for New Zealand compared to many of these others, New Zealand's interest rate stands above the rest. It's at 5.5, bearing in mind the Federal Reserve is at 5.252 to 5.5. So we have a ban. Uh, and then some of the others are a little bit lower than that. So I'll just bring that up. I should have really created a chart for that one. So 5% for the UK, 4.5% for Canada, 4.35% for Australia, the Eurozone, 4.25%, 1.25% for Switzerland. So New Zealand is at the top of the pile. So notably tighter financial conditions in New Zealand, unemployment, uh, moving higher at a more rapid pace than many of the other countries on this list. And a view that in two months time, if if we see something akin to what we've seen in the past three quarters, it's likely we're going to be pretty much back down to target. So there is pressure on the New Zealand to act and there is the basis for them to act. Now, the view for markets at the moment is split. 66% chance that we keep rates steady at 55 but then a 34% chance that we see a rate cut, according to ICON. We've actually got it here as Trading Economics. It's uh, the Refinitiv ICON platform. So this time around, we're looking at just a 34% chance of a rate cut. The next meeting is all the way off in October. So we're going to have to wait and we'll pretty much be around that uh 
point where we see New Zealand inflation being re reported. Let me just quickly look at when that is. So that's the 15th. So this meeting is going to be on the 9th. It's going to come a week, just, just less than a week before that inflation rate. Mark is very confident about that. 75% chance that we see a rate cut that time around, despite the fact that we would have be uh we wouldn't have seen our inflation data coming out by that point and then from there onwards you know pretty much a rate cut at every meeting the the perception is that over uh, the course of the next year we would then have rates back down around 3.75 so that's 1.75 percent below where we are at the moment so a, a, a dramatic period of easing ahead of us and so it's just a question mark of the timing of this. You know, do we start now? Do we see them front run it? Or do we see them front run it next time? Because in October, they still wouldn't have seen their inflation data. But either way, whether we do it this time around or in October, you're probably going to feel quite confident that we're going to see something in terms of inflation that brings us back down towards target. Whether we hit 2% or we're in that area, that seems very likely. And given what's happening within markets at the moment, the potential for a recession everyone's calling for over in the US, the volatility we're seeing for global markets, could we see them act this time around? It's certainly a possibility, 34% chance possibility as markets are pricing it. Um, but I think there's a good chance that we could see something this time around. In terms of the chart to watch, this is one that I will often follow when I'm looking at the likes of the Australian dollar or the New Zealand dollar. And I like to trade the Aussie against the Kiwi. On this occasion, it's particularly interesting because, yes, they're neighbours. So it means that it strips out a lot of the whole, you know, risk on risk off stuff. It strips out a lot of their impact on China because they're both heavily reliant on China. They're both uh, perceived to be relatively risk on the both commodity currency. So I like to see things, you know, in the same way as I like to trade the US dollar against other havens, the likes of the Japanese yen, the likes of the Swiss franc. I just find uh, them pretty interesting from that front. For this one, we're looking at a market that has pulled back pretty sharply uh, in the prior week. You can see this is the weekly time frame. So that big pullback coming down towards this ascending trend line, which we didn't touch, so we didn't really confirm, but we came very close to it alongside that 76.4, which again, we didn't touch, but we came very close to it. So we're starting to see the bulls coming back in charge here. You can see some bullish candles here, long lower shadow in towards that area. So there's a good chance that we do see the bulls coming back into play. The RBA, uh, you know, I think there's a good chance that we see, see them hold off for a, a decent period yet. And with the RBNZ potentially cutting rates, if we did see them cut rates this time around, we could see this reversal, this bullish reversal really start to take shape once again. In terms of the intraday basis, we can see that we have already broken out from the downtrend that has been playing out. If I'm sort of clipping up some of the swing highs, you can see this zone here between your 109.5 to 109.56. That's the key zone uh, that we needed to break through. And that's exactly what has happened. Then what's happened since we've seen a rally into the next resistance level. Um, and then we've pulled back into another retracement. In terms of the FIB, you can see this is probably a 76.4. Uh, it's certainly tagging around that area or below that area. So there's a good chance that the bulls go onwards and upwards from here. There's the basis for the RBNZ to move ahead of time. Will they do it? Who knows? But this has already started to show signs on an intraday basis of having bottomed out. And the wider trend points towards the possibility that this recent sharp pullback for the Aussie against the New Zealand dollar uh, could be a potential area where the bulls come back into play once again.